Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new video. This time we're going to be talking about all the heroes in Season 3 and we're going to rank them based on two main criteria. Fun, which means how much satisfaction you get from pressing the buttons, does it feel good to play, and generally how engaging is the gameplay of the class. That will be the tier list on the left and the tier list on the right is going to be how easy it is to play each of the classes meaning how easy it is to keep your party alive and do you have enough tools to handle any situation even in bugs. At the end I'm also going to mention how the tier lists are potentially going to change in season 4 which is looming relatively soon but now let's get started with the first class which is the Disciplined Priest. Having played all the healers this season, Disciplined Priest is definitely a unique type of gameplay style. You have to do damage to heal and pressing your Radiance with Mindbender and then spamming your penances is actually feeling pretty pretty good. There are some situations that don't feel that well if you end up uh, getting stuck spamming flash heals or having to press Rapture. But overall with all the changes that happened to this class I'm easily putting it at A tier 4 having a lot of fun with it as this is definitely one of the most enjoyable classes this season based on their tier sets as well. Now when it comes to how easy it is to play it, it's actually not that easy at all because first you need to switch your mindset from healing to actually doing damage and sometimes it's very hard to actually rely only on your smites. If you end up spamming flash heals that means that you're not reducing the cooldown of your mind bender which makes you fall further behind into healing. It's also quite hard to deal with spot healing, unexpected damage and it feels like outside of your bender you don't have enough cooldowns available except from the pain subs and the dome that reduces the damage inside. All of that probably makes the disc priest one of the more difficult classes to play so I'm just going to put it into the C tier. With the final verdict being it's a lot of fun to play this class but it's not easy at all. Moving on to the holy paladin that class felt amazing to play after the rework in 10.1.5. And that was easily the class that I had most fun on last season. But ever since it saw so many nerves that right now is just not satisfying to play at all. You still have many buttons and cooldowns to use but it's just not satisfying pressing these buttons as they doesn't seem to move the health bars enough into the right direction. It also feels that other classes got buffs to some of their spells and the holy paladin got the wrong spells buffed before the start of the season. It got buffs to the casting spells but it left behind the holy shock and also it also makes you not want to press word of glory anymore. So all of that kind of feels wrong and it makes probably the biggest drop from S tier last season. I'm gonna put the fun part of the holy paladin in C tier in this one. When it comes to how easy it is to play it I think putting it somewhere in the middle is going to be fair enough for the holy paladin because as I mentioned you have a lot of buttons that you need to press. But with the current tuning sometimes you have to press few of them together to make them work. You're also a melee class and right now you have to figure out when are you melee and when do you need to start casting your other spells when the melee ones are not enough. At the end I think it's fair to say that Holy Paladin this season is kind of in the middle of the pack. There's better options but there's worse for sure as well. And just for the record I think it's fair to mention that I had much more fun playing Retribution and Prot Pally this season than Holy so I guess that speaks volumes. Next on the list is the Mistweaver Monk and I think this one actually feels really really good to play this season. The so called spin to win game style is complemented by powerful but short cooldowns as Chigi and Shaylon's gift. You have short external in the form of Cocoon, you're very mobile, tanky, all of this feels pretty good to play with. And then you have an amazing tier set bonus so I think this is one very easy S tier for the fun factor of Best Weaver this season. I definitely enjoyed playing this healer the most this season and when it comes to how easy it is to learn it. You are a melee class but a lot of your healing is actually smart healing. You have to do damage to heal sometimes similar to the Disc Priest. And once you learn your main rotation your only problems are going to be in between the cooldowns of your Chigi and Shaylon's gift. So maybe there is a very steep learning curve at the very start but once you get it flowing it's actually quite good and satisfying to play. Definitely easier to pick up compared to the Holy Paladin, maybe a little bit short from S tier so I'm going to put it into high A. When you look into both charts that's probably the class with the best ratio when you look into both the fun factor and how easy it is to play the class. 
Next up is the Restoration Shaman and I might be a little bit biased here but when it comes to the fun of playing Restoration Shaman you get a very fun gameplay with a lot of variety that you can pick from. Do you want to cast Chain Heal or mix it up with Primordial Waves? Do you want to play Healing Stream Totem or Cloudburst Totem? You have very strong 3 minute cooldowns that feel pretty good to press. But the class is still lacking in some departments. There's no real external cooldown that you can use. Weak tier set pretty much as usual and then you lack the ability to heal on the move most of the time. So taking all of that into consideration, the Rest of Shaman is not as fun to play as the Mistweaver. We're gonna put it into A tier and we can probably put it behind this priest but if it goes in front that's not gonna be wrong either. When it comes to learning the class though, Rest of Shaman is probably one of the easiest in the pack. You can simplify the gameplay if you, let's say, pick Killing Stream Totem. You have cooldown for basically every possible situation, although some of them are quite long. But generally, you're a reactive healer relying on direct healing spells, so I think that's an easy S tier here. That makes the Restoration Shaman the other class with a pretty good ratio when we talk about both the fun and the easy factors. But if I have to compare overall, I think the Mist River Monk wins the season. Next up is the Restoration Druid and this is probably one of the most interesting classes because of the ability to switch different forms. That makes the gameplay quite dynamic, although if you get stuck into one form or you don't switch forms, the gameplay could also be very boring. Having said that, Resto Druid is easily S tier when it comes to the fun factor if you utilize its full power and you play it into a good group, but it's a nightmare to play if it's a bad group, there's a lot of unpredicted damage, you're not ready to heal and because of that you're basically stuck into caster form the whole time. Based on that, Rested Druid is probably the class with the biggest standard deviation when it comes to the fun factor, sometimes it's S tier, sometimes it's F tier, so I'm just going to put it into the middle, into B tier. When it comes to difficulty though, I think this is easily the most difficult class to play. First, you need to learn to rely on healing over time effects, and you also need to learn how to ramp your healing, pre-halt everybody and be prepared before the big damage comes so you can actually mitigate it. In the current state, I think it definitely requires more skill compared to let's say the Disc Priest and then if you want to DPS, you have to switch forms which makes the DPS rotation probably more complicated than some of the actual DPS classes. All things considered, I think that easily puts the Rest Druid into the F tier of how easy it is to play the class. Next on the list is the Preservation Evoker and I can easily say that this was the healer that I had the least fun playing this season so far. This could totally be a me thing, but the low range, people not stacking for your heals, waiting for the empowering spells to cast, although probably I lack a little bit of haste, having a cooldown attached to basically every button that you press, so you have to manage that very carefully, all of that made the Preservation Evoker feel like a struggle to play for me this season, maybe I was unlucky with the groups that I had as well. But that would be an easy F tier in the fun factor for Preservation Evoker, although I like the ideas behind the class design and the gameplay overall. When it comes to difficulty, it's definitely not the easiest class to play overall. As I mentioned, you have to manage your cooldowns very carefully as every button basically has a cooldown attached to it. Even if you do that correctly, you still have to be very well aware of your position and the short range that you have. Further raising the skill cap required to play this class, I would say it's definitely easier to play than Disc Priest, but not easier than Holy Paladin. So we can put this either into a very high C or in B tier behind the Holy Paladin. And last but not least we have the Holy Priest. Let me mention that this is the healer that I played the least this season, so if I play it a little bit more, what I'm going to tell you is probably going to change the tiering one tier up or one tier down depending. As a Holy Priest you have some pretty powerful buttons to press and it feels really good pressing them, complemented by your tier set bonus but managing their stacks, managing their cooldowns doesn't feel that well. Not having big AoE heal, not having personal defensives that are good enough, not having interrupt, all of that makes it feel a little bit less fun let's say even than the Restoration Druid. So I'm going to put the Holy Priest in B tier when it comes to the fun. When it comes to difficulty, it was not that hard to play up until like plus 20 skis that I got involved in. It's pretty straightforward class, it would have a little bit of problems if you have heavy AoE damage that you need to go through. 
But in general, I think it's fair to put it into, let's say, A tier behind the Mist River Monk. So those are the final lists, let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments below. And looking forward into Season 4, let me talk a little bit of what we can expect to change and in what direction. First, I think that both Mist River Monk and Disc Priest are going to keep their status quo, as they're quite powerful and it seems that both classes are going to keep their current tier sets, which are both pretty good. Restoration Shaman and Holy Paladin are probably getting their tier sets changed. And while I would expect that to benefit the Holy Paladin, so it probably creeps up a little bit into the tier list, I don't think that's gonna benefit the Shaman as much, because all the Shaman tier sets were quite bad, to put it this way. So if the Shaman moves, it's going to be into the negative direction, and the Holy Paladin is probably going to move up a little bit. I would also expect to see some changes and buffs to the Preservation Evoker because there were a lot of changes to the other healers this season, but I think the Preservation Evoker was left out a little bit. So if I was to bet, I would bet that they would see some love next season and probably move up a little bit to the rankings, maybe a lot if the changes are big. Holy Priest is not going to change a lot because it's still going to have a hard time competing with Disc. And Rest to Druid is Rest to Druid, it's still probably going to be the hardest class to play and then when it comes to fun, it's very very dependent on your group, sometimes it's S tier, sometimes it's F tier, I don't see how this is going to change at all. So that's it for this video, let me know what you're planning to play in Season 4, are you looking forward to trying something new or you're sticking to your guns? And of course, I'll have much more content into that direction once we have the PTR available for Season 4 and we know more of what's going to happen then. For now though, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video, until then, bye bye, take care, and get out of here.